Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to 18.2 Launch Week and our second webinar of the week, what's new in version 18.2 for ASP.NET, MVC, ASP.NET Core, and Bootstrap, presented by Web Program Manager Mahul Harry and Technical Evangelist Don Wibier. We have officially released 18.2 and all you have to do is click the My Downloads link and you'll see the latest version, which is 18. In this session, Mahul and Don will detail our newest products and features for ASP.NET Web Forms, MVC, ASP.NET Core, and Bootstrap. This session is being recorded, and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today, and we will send a link to the recording and a follow-up email. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mahul and Don. Thank you, Amanda. Hey, Don, how are you? I'm good, Mahul. Well, it's, it's uh, release time again. We've got a lot more happening in ASP.NET these days, and I'm excited to show everything in this release. So shall we just dive right into it? Sounds like a good plan. All right, so with what I call sort of like... Uh, it's not the new DevExpress, but lately in DevExpress, have, you may have noticed that we're so much more open about feedback from you guys. In fact, uh, we even published a lot of what you were going to expect in uh, several blog posts from the different teams. So we talked a lot about what was already coming out. And so you may have seen this. So I'm happy to say that a lot of what you saw in these blog posts is going to be, uh, is already in the release. And as Amanda mentioned, it's available now. You can download it today. The demos are online. But hang out and check out what Don and I are about to show you so we can give you some context and you can see how these features are useful for you and uh, where they were probably inspired from. All right, so to start with Don, let's just dive into the big control, and that is the grid view. Now, the ASP.NET grid view control is probably the uh, most popular control we have for ASP.NET and for good reason. It, it does a lot of excellent things and in this release we've added batch editing and updating uh, features that have improved. Now we already had batch editing and if you're not familiar with batch editing is where you can basically click an item and start editing right away and I can go and say I'm going to change uh, these fields right here and as soon as I do, you'll see that it says, okay, you've made several changes. Do you want to update them or do you want to individually cancel them? And I can do that. And what's happening is it's all done on the client side here. But in the previous releases, if I was to change the page or uh, click the top row to change the sorting or any action that caused a callback, then as you probably know, you would lose all those changes or it, because it would force you to either accept those changes or reject them while you're on this page. Well, for one, we have solved that. So now I can go to a second page and I can say, hey, look, I want to change this item on page three. I can change this item on page six and so forth. Now, you might say, well, that's great, Mohul, but how do I keep track of all those? Well, another new feature we've added is when you can, you can preview all those changes. So regardless of what ch page you made those changes on, we've got this new dialog that says, hey, here's all the changes you're possibly going, possibly going to make. Do you want to go ahead and make them now? And it's a really nice, useful feature for your end users to keep track of. All right, Don, what are the changes we've got going on? Well, one of the other controls, it's actually one of my favorite controls, is the uh, file manager in combination with the upload control. Um, maybe uh, you remember that we, uh, we added a very cool feature some time ago, which allows you to manage, for instance, uh, files on your Dropbox account. And we also support a number of other uh, cloud providers as well. So what that means is that on your own website, you can set up the file manager and uh, <clears throat> yeah, upload files to your Dropbox account and uh, modify files, delete them, add folders, etc. Well, in 80.2, we have added two more providers uh, to the range of providers that we already have. 
and that is support for OneDrive as well as Google Drive. And uh, yeah, I mean OneDrive is incorporated with Windows. I mean, as soon as you install it, it'll ask you to set up the account. And now you can actually use those as well. Uh, I think that's a pretty cool addition to the file manager. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. I mean, we've got all, I think, of the top cloud providers. And as you mentioned, both for the file manager and the upload control. Uh, so that's fantastic. Hey, Don, you know, I was so excited to get right in and show everything. I, I should have shown this uh, slide. So let me just back up a little bit. As I mentioned, we've got a lot for ASP.NET, and Don and I are starting to show everything for ASP.NET Web Forms and MVC. So everything we're going to show initially applies to both Web Forms and MVC, unless we specifically say it's for one platform or the other. And then we're going to cover ASP.NET Core, uh, the hot new framework uh, everybody has been asking us about. And then, of course, we'll wrap it up with Bootstrap as well as uh, we'll cover a little bit of the DevExtreme MVC stuff as well. All right. So, Don, now that you've mentioned the file manager, let me jump into the uh, pivot grid control. So, uh, for the pivot grid control, we've added, now, and you'll notice I'm using the online demos just so that you can also use them in the same way. And so uh, you can use this search, which is f a really f great way to find and get to uh, something very quickly. All right, so in this release, we have added in the pivot grid a new filter pop-up. Now, we replaced the f previous filter pop-up with a new implementation and an integrated search option. So you had this filter pop-up before, but with this integrated search option, I can now search for something like coffee and select that and quickly update that as well. Now this dialog, this new dialog, and its associated scrolling speed is up to three times faster in WebKit and Firefox browsers and up to five times faster in Internet Explorer. Now that's fantastic. Now we've also added support for unbound OLAP fields as well as several performance enhancements. So we've improved the pivot grid's in-memory data processing engine and it now supports optimized mode for a lot of features like custom types, custom totals, uh, summary event, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a ton, and we've got it all listed in the what's new. So if you want to take a look, definitely take a look at that. But what I'd recommend is if you want to experience it and give that benefit for your end users, simply upgrade to 18.2, and you'll get that automatically. All right, Don, what's, what else is happening with ASP.NET Web Forms and MVC? Well, one of the other more recent controls that we introduced is the card view. And uh, as you told, uh, I think a number of times in some webinars, that uh, the card view is basically based on the on the technology that we have in the grid view. But it's uh, it's got a bit of a different representation in, in uh, cards and stuff. Uh, but a lot of features are already the same. And what we introduced in this version is that you are now able to group data against multiple columns. Um, that was already possible with the grid view, but we have moved over this functionality and made it available in the card view as well. So you can actually see it on the screen that you now have those uh, several columns. So you've got this nice little pop-up on the right, uh, which allows you to, uh, to do the sorting as well, uh, the grouping. Yeah, excellent feature. And as you mentioned, uh, it's very much inspired by the grid view, so you'll find it very familiar, but being that it's card-based, you still get that nice card layout. But grouping, uh, awesome feature for the card view. All right, Don, you know, one one other thing, before I jump into the, uh, we've got a new project template. Before I mention that, let me quickly mention the, actually, you know what, I'm not sure. Actually, you know, you know, we're, we're going to talk about it in, in the bootstrap, Don, but let me also mention it here, and that is the uh, the form layout control, which is, I know, one of your favorite controls, and the reason I mention it is because we added something really interesting that I know you're a big fan of, which is data annotation support, which is model binding. So, you know, you get that with MVC. But what's nice is if we've got it because it, it, this, uh, and I know you'll talk a little bit more about this in Don's done all sorts of blog posts and webinars on this stuff. But the form layout, uh, what's nice is if you are a fan, a fan of model binding 
and people are always asking us, hey, we'd love for you to do modal binding support in web forms. Well, at least with the form layout control, it's available. Now, uh, Don, we've got a new adaptive project template, and it's really interesting because it's a project template that we've we've had plenty of ASP.NET project templates before, and uh, they've done things like responsive design and so forth. This one is by far the best one. Now, I know you always hear that kind of uh, uh, talk from Apple, like this is our best iPhone ever, but this is definitely our best application template ever, just because we're always improving on it. Now, in this one, not only is it got a lot of responsive features. Uh, in that when you resize it, for example, we've built this uh, sample right here. So we can, uh, uh, we'll link to this if you, uh, if you want to take a look. But what's nice is it itself is built with that project template. So as you can see, as I resize it, I get these things like a nice hamburger menu. The, the top uh, items here got collapsed into another menu over here and so forth. So as you can see, the project template is a really nice HP.NET project template, and it gives you things like sticky uh, side menus, sticky toolbar, sticky footer, navigation, and so forth. And you can go ahead and add DevExpress controls to it, like Grid View, Scheduler, which themselves have fantastic responsive and adaptive features built into it. Now, you can find this project template in your Visual Studio after you install 18.2 by simply going File New and under the DevExpress item. So once again, excellent. It's got a lot of great things built in. And the most important thing is people are saying, hey, I like your themes. I love your professional office themes, all that good stuff. I want to use them. And I even want them for things like my login control. So if I go sign in or register, so this is completely built with that stuff. And the underlying items, uh, for example, with login, are using the Microsoft technology. So What's nice is you get the DevExpress UI with the Microsoft technology and all built up with ASP.NET Web Forms or MVC. All right, Don, what's happening uh, over with charts? <coughs> well, uh, we have a couple of nice features on the, on the charts as well introduced. Um, one of the things is that we have done some enhancements on the pane layouts. And uh, what you see on the screen is a couple of panes with charts. Um, you will now be able to uh, add individual titles to each, each pane, as you can see. And you can actually hide one of those panes by clicking its title um, once you have enabled that option. Um, and you can also display the panes uh, using a grid layout. And that is obviously uh, a pretty cool for the responsive features that you already saw in the, in the project template that Mahu was just showing. Um, yeah, so again, uh, a lot of responsive uh, features have been added to also the, the charting control. One of the other things that we introduced is a so-called drill-down charts. Um, with that, you can give your end user like uh, a really nice experience to browse through its data in a visual way. So what you see is if I click on one of the series, it will zoom in on those details, and the nice thing is, on top of the of the chart, there is also the little breadcrumb navigation, which allows you to move up in the in the tree, basically. So, yeah, a really nice uh, interactive way of of going through your data. Excellent. All right, love love when the charts get uh, those nice little features. Awesome. Let's move on to the editors, Don. And you know, there's so many excellent editors for web forms in MVC. And so we've added a, a feature that was really inspired by our customers. And uh, so a lot of customers have been asking us, hey, we love your combo box and token box. And we love what you've done with the grid view. So in the grid view, if you're familiar, we have in there a feature that allows you to work with large databases. Now, we call it server mode. And essentially, server mode is similar to server-side paging, but it essentially offloads the task of dealing with a large amount of data on, the web, on, the, on your web server. So typically, if you know, when you data bind something in ASP.NET, you, you do that work at the web server level, at the ASP.NET web server level. And that's not the best uh, 
way to do it if you have a large amount of items. Now, if you have something like a thousand rows or less, sure, you can get away with it. Or if you have a powerful server, you can even do 10,000 rows or something like that. But when you've got a lot of rows, like half a million, million, or more, you want to let the database handle sorting, uh, grouping, all the, all the things that a database is optimized to do. And that's what essentially server mode does. And so uh, server mode can be used with our link server mode data source, entity server mode data source, our XPO uh, data source. So it's really very versatile. And our customers who know this uh, mode and love it have said, listen, we believe it or not, we have scenarios where we have combo boxes. We, we are using your list controls like your combo box and uh, other list controls to work with a large amount of data. So for example here, we can see the combo box got a, the, the grid embedded in it. And in the past, we enabled a way that you can do server mode with it, but it was very, it, it was involved a lot of code. Now that mode is still available for those complex scenarios, but now that we have integrated server mode support with our list editors, it makes it a lot easier. So now, for example, you'll see as I start scrolling down, I can get the rows really quickly and check out this time here. It's going to remain light and fast and keep your end user's user interface uh, as quick as it needs to be. So now I can look for a name like, I don't know, let's see if Julian's in here. Nope, sorry Julian, it's only Julio, your alter ego. Uh, but as you can see, it gives your UI light, fast, and your server mode uh, capable. All right, Don, what else is happening with editors? Well, uh, again, we have been talking about responsive features and, and stuff to make it all model friendly. Well, I think this is also one of the very nice things here. Uh, because what we have done um, in this release that uh, the drop-down editors can switch to modal mode based upon a browser width. Um, and, I mean, probably most of you have visited a website where you have this pop-up to select a date and you'll get this date selector on your mobile phone. And yeah, to be honest, this is not desirable if you're on your mobile phone and you want to navigate through a certain date. I mean, I have this travel website who does that all the time. Um, in this release, you'll be able to switch over to a modal pop-up instead of this drop down basically. And what you see here is a way more friendly selector uh, on a smaller device like a, like a mobile phone. Um, and this is just out of the box behavior now. If you want to use this, just upgrade to the latest version and you'll have this great feature on your website. Awesome, well let's move on to another feature of our editors and that is in our date editors and uh, calendar control we've added a new mode. Now if you are familiar with jQuery or iOS development the term picker won't seem new to you but it's a, t it's a form of a selector and that's so we just decided to keep the name but we've added a new mode to the date editors and it's called month year picker. Now this was very much inspired by customer feedback. So the most obvious is that a lot of well, a lot of customers came and said, "Look, we've got we, yes, we have date time fields, but we have need for allowing the user to only select the month and year." Now the most obvious uh, scenario that comes to mind is uh, credit card validation, right? You have credit card expiration dates, and that's a month a year. But what we found from our customers, and thanks to your excellent feedback, there's a ton of other scenarios, way more uh, uh, similar, well, in, in the sense that it's not just for credit cards. They have, let's say, employee evaluation calendar items that they need to do for a month, year, and so forth. So, first of all, I want to thank all those customers who gave us that excellent feedback, but it helped us to create these new modes. Now, with these new modes, you can set it up for so that the end user can only select, let's say, the month, or uh, you can select it uh, only for the year, or even just for the date. So, and we've also added a couple of new properties where you can set the initial view and the maximum view. So both of those where you can say, look, initially I want to show the years mode, but the max view they can go to is perhaps uh, decades or something like that. So uh, once again, uh, the calendar and data data controls uh, provide this. Now. We've also got a uh, another mode, 
and it's called the scroll picker mode. Now the scroll picker mode is a mode that allows the end users when they're on a small screen device to get a mode similar to what you might find in something like iOS or Android or, or, or iOS or Android type of operating systems and that is a mode where they can scroll using their touch device uh, using their fingers essentially so here as you can see if I am in this mode I've got the full-on calendar control but if I go to a small screen device and the control detects that it's going to first of all use that modal mode that Don talked about but it's also going to give you a scroll picker mode and the scroll picker mode says oh yeah yeah this is typically how that uh, an end user will be able to select it's got a larger touch target as well as scrolling capabilities all right Don what else is happening with our editors <laughs> Well, one of the other things, it's not really an editor, but it is obviously associated with editors, is uh, the buttons that we have. We have uh, added a couple of predefined render styles, and this is obviously slightly uh, inspired by Bootstrap. Um, you can now attract certain attention to certain actions uh, by, for instance, uh, put a render mode uh, of danger to one of the buttons and you'll have a really uh, red button in this case or you could change the render modes to outline or secondary or new item or native and well native will just render the native button but you can have like yeah certain amounts of attention to specific elements in your UI now by just specifying that render mode um, yeah to, to make sure that the user uh, knows what he wants. Awesome. All right, Don. Uh, sorry, while you were talking, I was trying to load up the next demo, and that is the Rich Text Editor. Now, the Rich Text Editor, uh, one of our powerful office controls, as we call them, uh, is the Rich Text Editor and the spreadsheet known as the DevExpress Office Controls. And the team has added a new simple view. We call it uh, Simple View slash Web Layout but you can now view documents in simple view mode and in this view mode the document is not split across multiple pages nor does it have margins headers or footers in essence like a web layout right because in a web layout you don't have those kind of things so it's a way for your end users to view uh, without having page breaks and so forth in case they want to have that style of uh, layout so once again it's a new, uh, another new option for the powerful rich text editor. All right, Don, what's happening over with our menus? Well, we have done uh, quite some work over the past uh, releases on the menu, actually. And uh, obviously, one of the cooler things that we introduced recently was uh, the support for the hamburger menu. So in case your screen has a certain width, the whole menu will collapse in one go and you'll get like the hamburger menu. Um, but that was maybe a bit too too uh, over the top. So we have done something in between. So if you get on a screen which gets slightly smaller, you'll actually see that the titles will disappear and uh, only the icons will remain. So you'll still have like a full screen width menu and uh, once the, the, the screen gets even smaller, then it will eventually collapse into the hamburger menu. But now you have something in between the full menu and the hamburger menu, and you'll still, yeah, it, it just gives a bit more exp uh, user experience on a uh, medium-sized device, basically. So it's a small but very useful feature, I guess. And I don't know how the team did it, but they've essentially mapped out my daily eating habits right here you know you start with meat and poultry and you end with wine yeah I think that you should stop having so much contact with those guys man they know you way too well that's true that's true uh, thanks now, now let's move on to the excellent scheduler control now the scheduler control has some really interesting features and let me just use this here now we got inspired with the scheduler 
uh, we, we're always looking at the competition for the scheduler. Now, we don't just look at the competition in terms of like, you know, typical other vendors and stuff. No, no, we're, we're looking at stuff that you use. And, you know, so one that we are really inspired by is Google Calendar, which actually has some really nice features. So we took a look at one particular one that uh, they have, and that is they've got this, uh, what, what the, um, I, I guess it's called, uh, material design is really what the language is called, Google's design language. And they have something called a floating action button. And this floating action button, uh, essentially, first of all, we first designed this floating action button for um, the scheduler. And it's integrated into the scheduler. So as you can see, it's really useful. And we said, look, it's not just useful for you know small screen devices. It's useful for desktops as well. So what's really nice is we took this and we actually made it a separate control, which I'll show in just a second. But what's nice is it's context it's contextual in that you can it's context based, meaning that right now, because I've not selected anything and I mouse over it, I get this longer version of the button. But when I click it, you can see it actually creates the new uh, item. Now, I'll hit cancel and let's say I select an appointment. Now, when I select an appointment, another new option that you'll see is that we've added this tooltips item here at the bottom as well. So the user can experience uh, you know, using touch first and mobile devices. So this tooltip support is obviously for the appointments and they can close it. Or if you see the button here, it's changed context and says now I can edit that appointment or delete it. So really excellent uh, uh, enhancements to the user inter interface for the scheduler. Now we went further than that, Don, and we have improved the performance once again of the scheduler. We've been doing this now for several releases, and I'm happy to say in this release that Google Chrome performance with our ASP.NET scheduler is up uh, 1.1 to two and a half, and on Microsoft Edge, it's up even more than that. So uh, definitely take a look at the scheduler in this release. All right, Don, um, what else is happening? Uh, oh, you know, Don, sorry about that. I sh totally messed up something here. You were supposed to mention the performance there. All right, let's 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 just dive into the spreadsheet then. How about that? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. All right. So the spreadsheet also has support now in this release for pivot tables. Now, if you're familiar with Excel, and I know you are, Don, uh, especially with your uh, CMS background, you've worked with several uh, pivot tables, I'm sure. But uh, we've added not just support for pivot tables, but we've got this excellent dialogue. And what's nice about this dialogue is we've added this option for deferred layout. So what this allows you to do is essentially allows you to batch a lot of changes. So if I make a change here and put months there, before I hit update, uh, this defer layout will make sure that it doesn't happen right away so that my UI doesn't get bogged down in case I have a really large Excel file. Because let's face it, Excel is a big program and the fact that we're able to bring you this as a standalone HP.NET control is just fantastic. It's, that's why we love this uh, big office control. Now, not just pivot tables, not just this new dialog, we've got support for cross-sheet formula editing. So end users can now use cell values from any worksheets to create formulas for the active worksheet. So that's gonna be cross-referenced now. And finally, we've got new behavior settings that allow you to prevent end user actions on worksheets, columns, and rows. So you can make it even more secure down to the worksheet level. All right, Don, shall we move on to ASP.NET Core? Yeah, that sounds like uh, an exciting topic here. You know, uh, let before you jump in, Don, I know you're going to talk a little bit about our ASP.NET Core stuff. Um, let me simply mention that we hear your feedback. So don't ever think that we, you know, when you're saying like, please do this, please do that, you got to tell us. You got to tell us because that's what drives, you know, this type of uh, uh, openness and feedback. And give us those scenarios. Don't just say, "Hey, I really love this." Tell us why, so we can envision and take all that feedback from other customers and make something really useful and interesting. 
Okay, Don, what is happening with ASP.NET Core in this release? Well, I think one of the biggest uh, things uh, to announce here is that the reporting that we already had in 80.1 is uh, coming out of the CTP, so it's not a community technical preview anymore, but it is officially released now. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, a very exciting thing. Um, I've had a lot of questions about it, and uh, yeah, we can now actually say like, um, yeah, this is uh, this is is really cool. And one of the most cool things here is that we actually have integrated a designer so when you start a new project in a dotnet core of the, if you start a new report in a dotnet core project you get a designer because if you don't have a designer uh, it will be pretty difficult to create like a layout for the report but we've managed to include a designer and we even included um, some some ways to do the event handling on certain stages of the reporting phase so i think this is a very cool feature uh which we implement here absolutely done you know i like you mentioned there you don't typically see designers but uh in asp.net core but we have to bring it across because how do you make a report without a designer so the same great designer that you're used to from the reporting team they have brought it over so you can edit and create those as well and uh, still use that and uh, as you mentioned uh, we've got this template and if you are uh, if you've got a demo center installed for 18.2 this demo center then you'll find uh, you can uh, let me see if I can bring it across we've got this new HP yeah. core uh, demo you can bring across as well which will launch a little demo that you can check out uh, locally so definitely, definitely take a look at this updated uh, items as well. And if you're curious at all, there are some limitations in terms of what we could and couldn't support, uh, and we've listed them all here. So for example, if there was a problem with Entity Framework in DB Context or something like that, we've got it all listed in uh, a recent blog post. And once again, there's a uh, the team wants your feedback, so they've got a nice little survey that you can let us know, and this will help them prioritize what the next features that uh, they will likely support. Now, Don, you were saying something? I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to mention uh, one other thing because uh, uh, people were uh, asking about that as well. Yeah, what about Angular? <clears throat> well, we have some documentation available on how to include this uh, in an Angular application. So uh, because it's running on .NET Core, it should be obvious that you need a .NET Core backend, but uh, from the front end, you can actually use uh, the reporting in an Angular application as well. And what you see is uh, on the NPM page, uh, we have a very simple uh, demo here, which uh, shows you how to incorporate this in an Angular application as well. Simple demo, Don. We've got all the steps. What do you mean simple? No, seriously, uh, it, it, you're right, Don. It's, it's got the basics of, hey, install the NPM package. Here's what you need to do for your, are they still called directives? I don't know what they're called these days. Maybe components? Anyways, so for your Angular, you can add our, dev, our Derek Stream built reporting integrated awesome things for uh, Angular for the reporting uh, suite. So you get full-on DevExpress reporting that... Uh, is available with Angular, now ASP.NET Core as well. All right, speaking of ASP.NET Core, Don, we now have, I hope everybody's ready for this, the DevExpress Office Controls, the spreadsheet, and the rich text editor for ASP.NET Core. Now, in this release, they are available in CTP form, Community Technology Preview, because we've got all the major features, but as you'll see, there are still some features we're not quite finished with, and that's because we want you to use them. We want you to give us the feedback. But what this means is you can now use this DevSpread spreadsheet and rich text editor. You can build your own version of uh, Office 365 online using DevExpress controls, and they can run on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, which can save you a lot of hosting fees, right? Because yeah, Windows tends, still tends to be a little more expensive. But what's nice is .NET Core is so powerful, they're, and they're constantly improving 
the performance of it. In fact, as you saw recently that Microsoft has uh, announced uh, their intents for .NET Core 3 and all the stuff there, interesting stuff they're doing there. So we're already supporting this with .NET Framework 2.1 and above. And uh, as, uh, as Microsoft keeps churning out more, we'll keep up to date with them. But what, what's interesting is DevExpress, uh, as we've said in the past, we've got your back with ASP.NET Web Forms, ASP.NET MVC, and now ASP.NET Core. Now, ASP.NET Core Rich Text Editor, uh, let me tell you a little bit about it, Don, because it's fantastic. We built both controls using our client-side JavaScript, JavaScript technology with DevExtreme. So while we have built them with it, uh, they are not available in DevExtreme, but we'll take a look back at your feedback. These are built for ASP.NET Core specifically. And this one specifically is largely a client-side control, meaning that all document operations, including importing and exporting the document's model file, are performed on the client, which is fantastic, which means that the control's state is not on the server either. That means that when you, it doesn't ne need to synchronize with the server when the document is opened. So, really fantastic feature. It doesn't mean that it doesn't synchronize, it just means that it doesn't need to synchronize when it's first opened. Now, what's fantastic is that that's great. We can get away with that with the Rich Text Editor. Now, uh, I mention this because the spreadsheet is slightly different. Now, the spreadsheet is it, one, it's a bigger control, but it also works with bigger files like Excel files that can be really large. So we actually have the spreadsheet as sort of two, uh, the UI portion is obviously client side as much as possible, but it deals with a server portion as well. Now, as you know, in ASP.NET Core, uh, it, there is no things like a page model and so forth there was uh, with web forms and stuff. It's not even uh, like MVC. In, in, in ASP.NET Core, it's very different. And so in ASP.NET Core, our server portion is there to deal with the heavy tasks. So for example, when you are opening and processing a large Excel file, well, that's done on the server side. And then of course, the UI is freed up to remain light and fast. Now, uh, both of these are available today. You can try them and uh, I'm a big fan of ASP.NET Core, so I'm really looking forward to your feedback. Now, as I said, we've got a lot of great features baked into this release, even though it's a CTP. We've got that new simple view, we've got autocorrect, we've got uh, popular format supported. However, there are some major limitations. For example, mail merge, spell checker, printing, exporting, and we're working on those for sure. But we want your feedback. Try this. Tell us how, you know, the stuff that we do expect to work, how, how is it working for you? And same thing with the spreadsheet, uh, spreadsheet. We've got support for sorting, mail merge, formulas. However, some major limitations are things like a lot of the dialogue UI. So there are no dialogues that are currently supported. Formula bar, context menu, so forth, exporting, printing. We're working on those, but once again, try them out. We'd love to get your feedback. Okay, Don, enough of ASP.NET Core. Uh, before we move on, to the next uh, uh, feature, I'm um, sorry, the next uh, major thing we support in ASP.NET. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Now, Bootstrap. I know you're a big fan of Bootstrap, Don. I think you did the webinar on it as well. Um, Absolutely. It's fantastic. Bootstrap, let's face it, is, uh, as Bootstrap calls it, the most popular framework for building sites. And by good measure, you know, it's got uh, started as a Twitter bootstrap framework and now it's got a life of its own. Um, but about, uh, I, how, when was it? Uh, earlier this summer or later this summer, I should say, I wrote a blog post called Simplifying Our HP.NET Control Suites. It's a big, long blog post, but in essence, what it says is we have a lot of choice available for you. And the reason for that is there's a lot of different developers and we want to help as many developers as possible. However, we cannot always uh, meet all of those, um, how do I say, uh, we can't make everything for everybody, but we try. Now, one of those that we tried was, we, we know there's a lot of web forms developers that love our classic HP.NET controls and classic ASP.NET MVC controls because they have a similar 
API. They have uh, things that are based on the web forms controls. And that's, a, that's fantastic, right? Because that addresses one need. However, a lot of customers come to us and say, no, you know what? I want more MVC controls that are client-centric, modern, et cetera, et cetera. And we did that. We took our dev extreme controls and we made them as MVC controls. So that addresses a different set of MVC uh, developers. So even though we have competing technologies, it makes sense. Now, we we released the DevExpress HP and a Bootstrap line of controls for web forms, and we again similar to our HP.NET web forms controls. They are similar in that sense, but however, these are completely based on Bootstrap. So the theming is completely different from this. So it addresses a slightly different set of developers, but it's also meant to help web forms developers. And we said, wow, it would be great if we can help our web forms developers move to ASP.NET Core. So we created this line of controls, but when we looked at it closer, and we decided, you know what, it doesn't really make sense and it doesn't help us uh, help our customers out the way we intended it to do. And we said, we have a better set of MVC control, we have a better set of HP.NET Core controls delivered from DevExtreme MVC. Because DevExtreme MVC, as you'll see in a minute, anytime something occurs in DevExtreme MVC, the core controls, it bubbles up into its other set of frameworks that it supports, whether it's Angular, Vue, ASP.NET Core, and it's fantastic. And we just said, look, we this doesn't really make sense for several reasons, and we decided that we were a little bit too early in releasing them because we actually intended to release them as a CTP, and we just accidentally released them uh, in 18.1. But in essence, we decided not to continue that line. Now, I understand and again, we are listening to your feedback, and a lot of customers were like, hey, you know, uh, you gave us a lot of good feedback, and I appreciate that. I don't want you to think we did not hear you. We hear you. But uh, in essence, going forward, we are not going to continue the Bootstrap Core. I'm sorry, the Bootstrap for ASP.NET Core. Going forward, it is definitely going to be for MVC. Now, that doesn't mean everything is written in stone two years from now. Who knows? If things change with ASP.NET Core, maybe we'll have to readdress it. What if they reinvent web forms? Who knows? I'm just saying, as going forward, uh, as of today, right now, DevExtreme MVC controls is what you want to use with ASP.NET Core. Now, that said, uh, the DevExtreme MVC controls do not contain the ASP.NET Core controls, uh, the uh, that of Office ASP.NET Core controls that I just mentioned with the rich edit and spreadsheet. Those are definitely the ASP.NET subscription. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Mahul, you got controls for ASP.NET here and there. Again, that is just a, uh, how do I say, uh, it, it depends on the value. So if you look at our dashboard, our dashboard is only available in Universal. And that's by design, right? It's a big offering. So if you're ever curious, we've got chat on our on our site. You can come in and ask us. You can email us and so forth. But in essence, I recommend, of course, get Dev uh, Sorry, get D Experience Universal. That'll give you everything we have, including source code. So you'll never have to worry. Uh, do I have something? All right. With that said, let's talk, Don, about the Dev Express Ace.NET Bootstrap controls for ASP.NET Web Forms and everything awesome in there as well. Now, typically, you have everything that's available from our Web Forms, except it's missing still a lot of major features and major controls, which we're addressing with each release. Now, what do we got in this release, Don? Well, um, obviously, the, the Bootstrap uh, Web Forms controls, as you mentioned, are slightly based on uh, the technology from the from the classic Web Forms controls, and that means that every now and then we port over a one or several controls over to the uh, Bootstrap set. And with 80.2, we have uh, released a file manager for Bootstrap. And, well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, this is one of my favorite controls. Same goes for the Bootstrap version of it because, well, as you can see, it looks light, it is working fast, and it has all the features that we have on the other file manager as well. 
including cloud storage support and thumbnail and detail view modes and well yeah if you look at the style and how it looks it, it looks fresh it looks bootstrap and uh, yeah you can you can actually create your file manager uh, in a bootstrap powered website again you know I, I would mention one thing is that if you're doing a new site with HP.net these days take a look at our bootstrap controls as Don just said, they've got a, a modern feel to them, but not just that. Because they're based on Bootstrap, you can use any Bootstrap theme out there. Essentially, you just drop that theme, and uh, Don's got a whole webinar where he shows you how to do that. But I would absolutely choose these uh, controls these days if I was doing HP.NET Web Forms today. Now, that said, let's move on. And the other big news for Bootstrap is that we've added a... Uh, ribbon control to this uh, line of controls. Now what's fantastic is this ribbon control it looks and feels just like our other ribbon controls so you've got the same great features for the default ribbon with data binding and keyboard support and the quick access toolbar and of course uh, great adaptivity features that you've come to expect as well but beyond that I want to mention one of the main reasons we brought this ribbon control over it's so that we could bring over the office controls so the rich text editor and the spreadsheet are available with Bootstrap in this release as well in preview mode. And that, once again, is because we've got a lot of great features, but we're not done with it just yet. But it, as you can see, it's got a lot of the major features like mail merging, auto correction, headers and footers that you can start using today with your Bootstrap sites. And um, again, uh, Give us your feedback. If you find any issues, report them. But both the Rich Text Editor and the spreadsheet are available in Bootstrap. All right, Don, what else do we have happening in this release? Well, one of the other things that we uh, that we made available in the card view control that we already had for Bootstrap is um, it is now possible to uh, uh, do vertical scrolling and uh, endless paging. We, as I mentioned, we already had the card view, but we had to uh, move over a couple of features. And, uh, well, yeah, the vertical scrolling was one of them. And uh, the other one is the, um, the endless paging. So you can actually now uh, specify whether you want to have a link, which will show more cards, as you can see. Or you can uh, say, I just want to get more automatically when I'm at the end of the page. Awesome. Yeah, I love that endless uh, paging mode. Awesome. All right. Well, let's all also talk about uh, Bootstrap uh, themes. And in this release, we have added some new themes. Now, here we're taking a look at the default theme. And in a recent uh, blog post, I talked about these new themes. Now, when we release these themes, Don, we release them as free, and not just free, but open source. And that's because we wanted to give back to the Bootstrap community. So we made these op MIT open source license so that you can not just use them for free, but you can modify them too. So take these themes, the, Dev the new DevExpress Office White and the new DevExpress Purple. They're on GitHub. Go ahead and fork them. Uh, let us, uh, you know, and, and whatever you do, send me a tweet. Show me the, uh, the site that you made with it. So I'd love to see. But what's nice is, these themes are available as they are completely bootstrap uh, for themes and you can use them today. Now, you can experience them uh, online or uh, on any of our sites, but what's nice is you can see that the DevExpress controls also support them. So as you can see, we've got DevExpress Office White, which is uh, one that I really like, but then we also got this DevExpress Purple as well and it's supported in many of our, I'm sorry, it's supported in all of our controls, including things like charts and scheduler and so forth. So definitely check out those new themes for uh, the uh, ASP.NET Bootstrap controls. All right, uh, Don, what else is happening in Bootstrap? Well, one of the other things that we moved over and released in the Bootstrap controls is uh, also, again, one of my favorite controls. You mentioned it earlier in the webinar, 
Um, but now we have this available for uh, Bootstrap as well, and this is the form layout control. I'm not sure about you, but uh, do you like building forms? No, so it's a terrible activity. Yeah, that's what is my opinion as well. Well, uh, with the form layout, you can actually create a form which always looks good, um, and it can collapse and expand columns and rows, and, and it can do all kinds of crazy things. You don't need to worry about the layout. You just need to assign either the fields, or as you mentioned before, you can bind an object to it which has the annotation attributes, and it will take them over and create a form as you're seeing on the, on the page right now. So it's an excellent, really powerful control, specifically if you want to build uh, a lot of uh, forms in your application. So yeah, absolutely worth checking it out. Yeah, and I, and I and I love that not, you know this data binding uh, is there as well. But as I mentioned earlier with the uh, web forms uh, uh, form layout control, the web forms and the Bootstrap form layout control both support data annotation attributes. Uh, which is fantastic. Again, it's whenever possible, we're going to try to bring those excellent features. But as Don mentioned, data binding can be very tedious. And I know he used to build a bunch of, actually, you said you used to build a full control like this, uh, right, Don? And, uh, uh, yeah, the, that's correct. I, uh, I used it in the CMS that I've built, and I actually built one myself. And I can tell you, it's a terrible job building one of those, uh, and I'm glad Dev Express has it now, man. Yeah, and so getting what's nice about this data annotation attributes is when you've got these data annotations like required or data type password and so forth, and and you data bind to the form layout control. Well, guess what? We're going to build that into the form layout controls uh, validation. So it not just saves you trouble to build the form, but you've got smarts built right into it. All right, so that's excellent. All right, let's talk a little bit about the other excellent popular control, and that's a grid view. So we've added support for uh, scrolling for uh, the grid view using vertical scrolling as well as horizontal scrolling. Now these, uh, and again, also virtual paging is there as well. So if I start scrolling down, it's going to go and load more rows virtually, meaning that on demand. Now, those features are necessary for uh, this next uh, uh, feature, which is fixed columns. So you can have you know, fixed columns without horizontal scrolling. So we've added uh, a, a fixed columns as well, and it works similar to what you might expect from the uh, standard grid view that we have. And we've also got support for endless paging as well. Now, we've added support for uh, context menus. So now you can get uh, context menus not just for the row. So for example, if I click on a, well, let's here, let me bring up the context menu item here. And if I click on a row here, you can see I've got a custom context menu as well as for the group panel, as well as for the group row and the footer and header rows as well. Okay, Don, that is almost wraps up everything, but I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, other webinar we have coming up, and I've got this coming up with Julian on Wednesday. Now, I definitely want you to tune in for that because we will continue on with the other web story that we have, and that's the client side story. Now, typically uh, in here, we would talk about our uh, DevExtreme MVC controls, but uh, there's not, uh, what I want to talk about is, we're just going to talk about it in this release, and that is. Uh, the DevExtreme MVC controls uh, support now uh, the Bootstrap 4 layout. And so we've got a, a Microsoft Visual Studio project template that supports Bootstrap 4. Now you might think, well, that's, you know, is that the only item? No. And as I'll show you in Wednesday's webinar, everything that I talk about for the DevExtreme UI controls bubbles up to the MVC controls as well. So we'll, we'll get into more of that. Uh, but for sure, if you have ASP.NET, then definitely consider our DevExtreme MVC controls as well. Our classic controls are fantastic, but I want you to uh, consider, especially if you're looking at ASP.NET Core, you're going to be looking at the DevExtreme MVC controls for ASP.NET Core. So join us Wednesday, uh, as Amanda will mention. And, I, and then Don, thanks a lot for helping me uh, display all this. 
let's hand it back to Amanda and uh, see if we have any questions we can help answer. Hey, Mahul and Don. Um, the team has done a great job of, we've answered everything thus far okay. that has come in. Well, then don't feel shy to ping Don or myself on Twitter, on emails. Um, ask us the really tough questions like, when will you have this? How do I get that? You know, we, we want to hear your feedback and uh, we're open to learning more about how you're using ASP.NET and what your plans are. One of, the, one of the biggest questions I'll tell you right now we have internally is, you know, we get a lot of feedback like, I wish you had more stuff for ASP.NET Core. Okay, in all honesty, can you tell me, have you moved to ASP.NET Core? And, you know, if you, how serious are you about it, right? So let's say your role may be you're a developer and you, you know, Again, I am a developer as well. I love new tech, but it wasn't always easy to go like, yeah, we got to move to ASP.NET Core, right? To migrate to a new platform can be very hard and to convince your manager, your upper management, the company to move uh, a framework can be hard. So how likely are you actually to do it? And let, give us that feedback. Let us know. And if something is holding you up, if it's a feature like, uh, we really want XYZ feature from XYZ control, then we will move because that's what's really holding us up. Well, let us know that. that that's what drives us to deliver those new features. All right. With that, uh, I'll hand it back to you, Amanda. But thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Mahul. Um, all right, everybody. Like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be made available later on our DevExpress YouTube channel. You will also get a follow-up email with a link to this webinar and all of the 18.2 webinars sometime next week. And as Mahul mentioned, we do have a whole week of 18.2 webinars coming up. You can register at devexpress.com slash webinars. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Mahul and Don. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, Thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.